Hello and welcome to the University of Michigan Flint. We're so glad that you chose to pursue your bachelor's degree with us, and we welcome you as new students. I'm Shelby Newport, the Associate Provost and Dean of Undergraduate Studies, and I'm going to take you through an introduction today of all of our academic areas. This includes our units, research, engaged learning, study abroad, and lots of opportunities we have for you all as new students. So join me as I go through this introduction, and hopefully I'll introduce you to some new areas that you were not familiar with before. And then when you join us in August, whether on campus, remotely, or some combination, we hope that you will feel at home and recognize some of what I will introduce to you today. And while we're not able to have an orientation experience on campus this year, we can't wait to welcome you to campus when we're all able to safely return. So thank you for being with us and let's get started. The University of Michigan Flint is situated right downtown in the city of Flint. And you probably know this if you're either from the area or you know the street or you've been to campus in the past. But what's exciting for us about being rooted in the vibrant downtown area is that we can extend our conversations, our academic inquiry, lunch breaks and meetings and coffee connections out into the community of Flint. And that's really important to us and part of our academic relationships. We're excited to come back to this after a time away due to the pandemic. And one of the things I love seeing, usually in the summertime, are our research teams going over to the Flint Farmers Market for lunch. A faculty member and a faculty researcher and three research assistants, sometimes still wearing their white lab coats, out for lunch and continuing the academic conversation. Our faculty are really engaged with our students and want to provide you with opportunities all over the city. You'll often see a faculty meeting at uh, joining for coffee at the Flint Crepe Co. or just up the street, maybe at Cafe Rama, trying to work through the hard issues together in those welcoming spaces in downtown Flint. You're going to be a part of one of six academic units. We have the College of Arts and Sciences, CAS, the School of Education and Human Services, SEHS, both of those units are located mainly in the French Hall, but have classes spread out over campus. The College of Health Sciences, CHS, and the School of Nursing, SON. Those two schools are mainly located in the William S. White Building across the Flint River. And then we have the School of Management, SOM, and they are located in the Riverfront Center. And we are welcoming a brand new unit this year, the College of Innovation and Technology, CIT, which will have labs and classrooms across campus, but mainly in the new expansion of the Murchie Science Building. Your degree is housed inside one of these six units, but you might take classes outside of those. You're, you might take your general education courses in CAS if you're a student of SOM. So it's good to know those acronyms and good to know the locations of those units. Let's talk about general education. Our general education program is a university-wide program, and all incoming first-year students make their way through the plan in their own way. Check out the extended video about general education by Dr. Stephanie Roach, our general education director, in our new M Launch Your Success modules. More on that later. As I outline it here, the program is designed to provide you training in reasoning and critical thinking. It's part of your degree program that might feel a little outside of the thing that you were pursuing. Like, for example, if you're pursuing a bachelor's degree in management, you might say, why do I have to take all these other areas? Well, at the University of Michigan Flint, we think the general education program is the pathway to liberal learning environment. A lifelong experience of exploring things about areas outside your discipline. You're setting yourself up for a lifetime of learning. So you're going to start out in first year experience, UNV 100. And these courses are all three credit classes. You get to choose the topic and your advisor will outline some of those different topic areas for you, ranging from Let's Go Arts that experiences arts and culture in Flint to the sights and sounds of Africa that takes you somewhere else entirely. The first year experience class is designed to orient you to the university and give you some multidisciplinary perspectives to our academic inquiry here. You'll move through your English composition based on where you place, and then you'll take classes in all of these other attributes. We call the little letters that represent the, that they represent the areas as attributes. So humanities, H, fine arts, 
technology, finance and quantitative literacy, health and well-being, natural science, and a natural science lab, social science, global studies, and then finally a capstone. Sometimes that capstone is going to be in your specific area and discipline, and sometimes it might be outside of that or interdisciplinary, meaning it brings together a variety of groups of people to explore one idea. One of the things that students often say is, why do I have to take general education courses? And I wanna lay out uh, how to get the most out of these courses. There are 40 credits for you to explore. You get to choose things that maybe you never knew about in high school. Maybe you never experienced anything about anthropology or sociology, or you've wondered about a particular kind of literature, or maybe you play an instrument and you'd like to take an ensemble class to count as your fine arts, or even a dance class. We offer one credit dance classes, ballet, tap, jazz, hip hop, all as fine arts credit. Technology can expand your ability in computer programming at the very basic level, or also audio and video design in the Department of Art and Design. There are lots of opportunities for you to choose something that sounds interesting, maybe a little bit weird, and something that you've never heard of before. And that's how I encourage you to get the most out of your general education courses. But here's what some students say, and you can see it on the screen that, uh, so I'll let you read them for yourself, but I think that the general education selection of these quotes here, um, the idea is that the students often sign up for a class, maybe like COM 241 or Physics 110, and not exactly know why they picked it. It works in their schedule, it counts as that attribute, so that's why I picked it. But take a look at what they say. The work changes the way you think about the world. And the way the work in UNV 100 changes the way you look at Flint, experience the city that you're living in, and working in as a student at the university. And another exciting opportunity that one student took to fulfill a, a global studies attribute was a faculty-led study abroad. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit later. Let's look at engaged learning in each of the units. So the units I have discussed have really exciting things happening inside of them, and I just wanna give you a little snapshot of each of those things as it relates here. You're gonna hear us use those words, engaged learning, a lot. We think it's really important to have your learning connected to one another and to the Flint community. So in the College of Arts and Sciences, they have recently launched a program in green chemistry or sustainable chemistry, and this is a one-of-a-kind program it's actually the only one in the country, and they offer webinars on it and have a really interesting lab with faculty who are doing cutting edge and powerful research. Also within the College of Arts and Sciences have an exciting biology and wildlife biology program where students go out into the community, to the Flint River. And in this picture here, actually they're near the Flint River and um, doing research on the fish and wildlife in that area. How cool is it that you can study alongside your faculty member who might be doing research in the Flint River or on wild boars in Northern Michigan, like the picture on the left. And then they use that for their coursework and they use that for their own research moving forward. These are just two examples of how the sciences exemplify our spirit of the UM Flint creative innovation, where they empower students to explore and engage in their own way and in a way that makes an impact on the world. In the mechanical engineering program, they have a club that built an off-road competitive vehicle, a Baja racer, which they enter in competitions, and they built it right here on campus. There's a brand new mechanical engineering shop in the Murchie Science Building expansion, where the students will do the welding and all of the machining there. They are in for a real treat as they return to campus and get to spread out in the new Murchie Science Building expansion. In the College of Arts and Sciences, we also have a lot of collaborations across campus and across the city. Our history, archaeology, anthropology areas connect with the Genesee Historical Collections, which is actually located right in the Francis Wilson Thompson Library Building and run by Colleen Marquis. But as seen here, she holds all of the archives for the university and much of Genesee County right here on campus. And so our history faculty and archeology span faculty will have their students use that facility as well as other places around town. For example, the cemetery restoration with Dr. Th Thomas Henthorne or with uh, Dr. Bev Smith, archeology span faculty member in her project of the Stone Street excavation. 
In the College of Health Sciences the School of Nurse and the School of Nursing, they have an amazing engaged and hands-on learning in their nursing simulation lab. This place is state of the art and very cool to see. I've had the opportunity to witness it. And in this space, we have classes where we have nurses and physical therapists and respiratory therapists and nurse practitioners all working alongside their faculty in a simulation. You can see the simulation dummies on both of the gurneys here. And they're learning their craft and their work hands-on in this place. And that's located over in the White Building. In the School of Management, we have a Student Entrepreneur Society Club, which won Global Chapter of the Year in 2019 and continued to engage during the pandemic. And the School of Management also launched a brand new Model UN Club and competed remotely under the guidance of Dr. Greg Lawrence. In the School of Education and Human Services, our Education Department and Social Work Department often bring professional, national, and international guests to campus, or they go out into the elementary schools of Flint, hosting our students in their classrooms. These students and faculty exemplify the welcome and nurturing spirit of the UM Flint community, and they find ways to serve others while advancing the research in education and social work. In both areas, uh, in addition to our health sciences, they frequently use our ECDC as a learning lab space. That's our Early Childhood Development Center. It's a daycare on campus in the White Building, and that's the picture on the top right corner where the student researchers are practicing what they learn with and on the students who are in the daycare center. I also want to introduce you to the Common Read. The Common Read project is, uh, was started by faculty over 10 years ago. And they use this program to encourage first-year students and all continuing students to read one common book. We have an amazing committee of faculty and staff who read a bunch of different books each year and think about how the topic or the book could help connect to classes and connect to learning across the curriculum. So this year's common read is called The Home Place, Memoirs of a Colored Man's Love Affair with Nature by J. Drew Lanham. Actually, the author will join us for a virtual reading and lecture in November, and then hopefully join us on campus in April 2022 for a guided nature walk at the nearby Formar Nature Preserve. Free copies are available in the campus bookstore located in the University Pavilion, and can also be added for free when you order your textbooks online through the campus bookstore. If you have any questions about acquiring the book, contact the bookstore. We also have amazing ensembles and experiences for all students in music, theater, and dance. You may be someone who played in the orchestra or in the band in high school and want to continue that work, either as a music major or just as an ensemble member. Both are open to you. Most do have auditions, and you can ask your advisor about how to audition for these ensembles. Many of them are also open for class credit. And so as a chorale member, uh, a vocalist, you're receiving credits for participating in that program. Our theater productions are also open auditions and open to all students. Maybe you've never auditioned before and want to try that out. I encourage you to do that. And the same with our spring dance concert. Our dance ensembles are also linked to classes, like the music ensembles. So you audition to be in the ensemble and take that class. We also have study abroad opportunities. And now that we're in a bit, little bit difficult time for international travel, uh, we're uh, proceeding cautiously, but we're excited to get back to planning for the near future. Hopefully we'll begin these courses again in May of 2022, and we'll have some international courses for you to choose from. These can also count as your global studies attribute in the general education program, and are often interdisciplinary travel courses that are open to all students. The photo on the right is at a production of The Lion King in Tokyo, with a course that I led called The Business of the Arts in Japan. I co-taught this course, so I got to take 21 students to Tokyo for 11 days, along with my faculty member and colleague, Greg Lawrence, from the School of Management. We also have service learning trips that are going to places like Kenya, Honduras, Cambodia, and the Dominican Republic on a regular basis. Again, to learn in an engaged and hands-on way in these locations that need the service and outreach of UM Flint. I can't think of a better example of how our UM Flint structure allows students to impact the world in a really bold way. Within our community right here in Flint, we have folks from the physical therapy department going out and doing community-based labs and workshops with children and adults alike. 
Biology professor Rebecca Toniento is a part of a project she calls the Porch Project. It's her research, but it's also a beautification efforts in the neighborhoods of Flint. So she's working with students and neighbors on beautification efforts and bringing pollinators back to the city of Flint. This is an example of how research, coursework, and community and service all come together in a way that we call engaged learning. And then just over the I-475 overpass, we've got the Flint Cultural Center, steps away from campus and a real gem of Flint. We wanted to make sure that you knew about this uh, because there's so many places there where you may engage as a community member, but also as a student in this Flint Cultural Center. Your class might take you to the Sloan Museum, which is currently under a major renovation, but it's going to be pretty cool after it comes back to life. The Whiting and the Capitol Theater both bring Broadway caliber and Broadway tours, musical acts through those theaters, and you can get discounted tickets to many of the performances. We've got the Flint Institute of Art, which is an amazing art museum we're really lucky to have here. And you might have a class that asks you to go there. Occasionally, the museum even opens specifically for our classes, opening up early in the morning, say at 930, and then it's gonna be you and only you, the whole museum to yourself for a class visit. We have a great relationship with the folks at the Flint Cultural Center, and we hope that you take advantage of all the amazing things that it has to offer. So that's my introduction to the academic areas. Notice how they spill out into the community. We ask students to learn and do at the same time and not be bound by the physical walls of our campus. We value creativity, generosity, fortitude, and hard work. And I hope you've seen that represented here. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. My email is right here, snewport at umich.edu. And I hope that you find the rest of the faculty and staff and your fellow students uh, that you meet during this virtual orientation, orientation welcoming and warm. Welcome to our family. I'm so proud of you for taking the step to become a change maker for the future. Go Blue.